Mr. Luke Meyer. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Uh, the uh, title of today's hearing is Climate Change Solutions for Small Businesses and Family Farmers. And from that, it would, you would infer that a solution would be something that we would look for if we had a problem. And my concern is that at this point, I don't know that we have a problem based on sound science. And it's difficult for me to, to uh, look for solutions whenever we're, we're grasping to find a problem. And it's a little frustrating to, uh, I know you gentlemen are all doing a good job here of trying to work within a system that's being proposed, and it's um, a little difficult for me to frame questions whenever I have a concern about the basic premise of what we're doing here. So with that being said, uh, my concern is I've talked to a lot of my uh, energy producing folks in my own district. There, I've got three or my, in my state. I've got three major uh, public utilities that produce most of electricity in our state and a number of, of uh, rural co-ops I've talked to. And those folks say that we're going to um, raise our costs anywhere from 40 to 125, 150% for the cost of electricity in our state, which is 80 to 85% produced by coal. So from that situation with us, it looks like the impact is going to be pretty significant. Mr. Cavanaugh, you indicated that 20% of the production of iron or steel is um, due to energy. So we're looking at a 20% increase in, energy, in, in the price of your product. Is that correct? Yeah, if, if, if energy costs is 100%. doubled, yeah, that's right, then that would be a 20% increase in the cost. How devastating would that be to your industry? Well, that's, uh, you know, it would be... It, it would be a it would be a tremendous impact because uh, if you say that um, you know right now a ton of steel costs five hundred dollars let's say so that means it's going to cost six hundred dollars and you know you have steel coming in from other parts of the world that is still going to cost five hundred dollars so you're at a hundred dollar per ton that's a huge disadvantage and it, obviously it's more than you know, could be absorbed and eaten to retain market share and presence and all of that. I mean, you would, the, the, the consequence for the steel industry of a case like that, our only uh, response to using less energy is to shut production off. So we, we, we would shut down the hot end, the melting ends of our plants, and, uh, and, and that's where, you know, all the emissions come from, most of the energy is used, but it's also where most of the jobs are. And, and because steel demand is still going to increase because all of the all of the change in our economy is steel intensive to support climate policy, the steel is going to come from somewhere else. Okay, so that steel is going to get made, and it's going to get made in a place that's uh, uh, more damaging to the environment than making it here. So what you're saying is that if this goes in place and and we anticipate the, the costs as what they, they've uh, been pr projected out to be, it'll probably decimate the steel industry in this country. Is that what you just said? Yes, it is. At, the, at that level, yes, it is. Um, Mr. Johnson, Mr. Yoder, do you like to uh, in, uh, apply the implications of how it's going to affect the, the total cost of production for, for farmers? How it's going to, are we going to be able to survive? Well, uh, of course, we're going to survive. I mean, there's not much question. Everybody I know eats, and that's what agriculture is mostly about, is producing food. So we'll figure out a way to survive. I, I, uh, I guess my question, the, let me reframe my question. I guess my question is, are we going to be able to produce food for ourselves, or are we going to have to import it because we no longer can compete on, on sure. an international basis because of the cost of production here in this country? Sure. This is steel. But, well, you know, as we indicated, as I indicated in my uh, opening remarks, we think there's really not much question about what, about what costs are going to go up for agriculture. Fuel costs are going to go up. Um, energy costs are going to go up. Fertilizer costs are going to go up. Uh, the premise of your question seems to be that there's no reason for that to happen because there's a disagreement among the scientific community. That's not really an area that I have expertise to, uh, well, um, to talk about. But I, I will say that, you know, you've got the international scientific bodies that have uh, come to the conclusion that climate change is a real thing and it needs to be dealt with. Uh, we have a U.S. Supreme Court ruling now that is directing EPA 
under the Let me interrupt just one second, sir. To deal with my, it. The, the, the crux of my question is this. Because of what's going on, what kind of impact are those rules going to have on you? Is it going to cause us to okay. continue to not be able to expand our, or be able to utilize our, our farming ground in this country? And if so, uh, how much of an impact is it going to have? Because at the end of the day, in order for us to find a solution, if where there is a problem, we've got to find a way how we can mitigate that impact. Yeah, that that is the principal reason that we are here suggesting the robust use of offsets okay. uh, in climate change because uh, as these costs increase relative to the policy choices that are made here and in other places around the world, there needs to be an opportunity to far for farmers and ranchers to recoup some of those costs. And the uh, prescription that we've sort of, that I've outlined in my testimony is that we want agriculture to be able to use offsets uh, as one of those methods for adding some income to the bottom line instead of it just being a cost contributor. And we would argue very strongly that USDA has the expertise in that area okay. and, and that they should be weighing in on it. Uh, I'm over my time. Time Thank is you, Madam expired, Chairman. but um, I would allow for the gentleman to... Uh, just uh, quickly, I was, I'd like to say, Congressman, that, that that's why it's so important to do this correctly. If it's, it's done wrong, it could be horrible for agriculture. It could be detrimental to, 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 and put people out of business. So that's why it's so important to have a, a real robust uh, program for, for offsets and plentiful offsets so that, especially in this time, of this country is really reeling from... From, from economic downturns, we, the last thing we want to do is thwart any kind of recovery with this new, with this new uh, obligation to, to, uh, to, to make changes. So the, the least, least amount of pain that we can cause, and that would be with a robust cap-and-trade system where plentiful offsets can be bought so that that transition cannot thwart that, uh, that movement of, of steel being bought from, away from the, this country and so forth. So it can be done terribly wrong and have horrible consequences or it could be done in a, in a less uh, in impactive way where we can all survive. Thank you.